mentioned in one of your last talks that petroleum wasn't what we thought it was, that it wasn't <clears throat> a fossil fuel, that it didn't come from fossil <laughs> animals. Yeah. Is it just a mineral? Is it a mineral like any other mineral? Is that is that how it is that how it uh, what would you say? Uh, how did it what's the origin it, of it? You see <clears throat> when they first found petroleum uh, because they were beginning to make motors and, and, and needed on axles of wheels on railroad trains and all that sort of thing. And remember, trains started in the beginning of the 19th century. Then oil went from a, just a lubricant to a fuel, and it made it valuable. And Rockefeller happened to be the smartest man in the business at the time, but he made a lot of most of his money, or much of it, off the transport of the petroleum as well as selling it. But <clears throat> One thing they realized was, if you, because oil, uh, oil is uh, putting a price on oil is like putting a price on a pail of water. You know, the, the, no, no initial cost is in the ground, and, and in those days they were some of it almost what you'd call surface mining the oil. They didn't go down deep. So in order to get the price up, they hit on the idea that they would have to make it appear to be scarce. That they, that boy, after we take the next few barrels out, we're probably going to have to close as well. You know, that kind of thing. Well, a very fortuitous event. In 1892, there was a convention in Geneva of, of scientists to determine what organic substances are. Well, the definition of organic is a substance with hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. And so it's usually a living substance, a tree. You analyze a dead tree, hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen and grass and so on, living things, animals, we are, hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. So at this Geneva Convention, Rockefeller took advantage of sending some scientists over who said, oil, petroleum, is hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. Therefore, it must be derived from the, uh, the spoiling, the rotting, of formerly living matter and uh, playing the game properly when the this scientific convention was over they defined oil as a, a residue from formerly living matter well that makes it a fossil fuel I don't know why they decided to use the word fossil but it says you formerly living matter is fossil well of course today and, and, and another thing we should know is that there has never been a fossil of a, a, a real fossil found below 16,000 feet and you can't argue at 16,000 as a level line because someplace the ground sinks and so on but 16 is what the scientists say 16,000 we mine oil or we, we drill for oil at 30,000 33,000 28,000 every day of the week so right there we rule it out that it isn't fossil fuel it's called fossil fuel for the minds of the public to feel that it is a, a, an asset that is running out being depleted we talk about depletion allowance which is a lot of you know evidence is now mounting that world oil production is peaking or is close to it Globally, the rate of discovery of new oil fields peaked in the 1960s. Over 40 years later, the decline in discovery of new fields seems unstoppable. 54 of the 65 major oil producing nations have already peaked in production. Many of the others are expected to follow in the near future. Once the peak of world oil production is reached, demand for oil will outstrip supply and the price of gasoline will fluctuate wildly, affecting far more than the cost of filling a car. And actually, if you know the world's oil supply, you know that it is not going to run out for an awfully long time. It is the second most prevalent liquid on Earth. And, and we haven't begun to... Be. Well, with all that background, you see, the people in charge of the petroleum business for perfectly reasonable business uh, things like any other man in the business wants to keep his price as high as he can get away with and the way to do is just say well there's no more we, we, we the last barrel is going to cost a thousand dollars and then it's all done and and they preach that stuff what bothers me is that 
that in geology books, it's in there. The geologists say it's a fossil fuel. They, they've somehow they've been bought. I, mean, you, I, I went to a four-year federal staff energy seminar run by the government of the United States during the so-called energy crisis. I was the participant that represented the railroad industry. The airline industry was there. Every AA administrative assistant of senators and congressmen was there. The CIA was there. The Defense Department was there. The State Department was there. Sometimes sitting right in front of me in the row would be Henry Kissinger with his friend, um, uh, the, the head of the uh, Department of Defense. Uh, uh, that's too bad, I can't put the names with them. But anyway, people like that, top men in the government, sitting there listening to the Federal Staff Energy Seminar. Well, what this was doing is for four years, they were teaching a propaganda line to the leading people in this country, and therefore to the leading people in the world, when you include the Hissing uh, Schlesinger, H Kissinger and Schlesinger, among others. And the object of it was, as Kissinger used in his own terms when it was time for him to speak, to create a world price for oil. In other words, not uh, 30 cents a gallon here and 90 cents a gallon there, but let's get a world price. That's their goal, and they're trying to do that for wheat and everything else. We don't realize what, it, what the controls are, whether it's oil or some of these other things. Almost everything today is being categorized at the highest price they can possibly make it go. And so calling petroleum a fossil fuel is the basis for th this system uh, with respect to petroleum. Nice. And, and I went, I don't know if the name Arthur Kantrowitz rings any bell. Arthur Kantrowitz <clears throat> is the head of the Kantrowitz Labs set up by the uh, AFCO company uh, near Boston, uh, Scientific Laboratories and um, a great man in the scientific world. And Kantowitz and I were sitting at a table at this uh, seminar once, and the table happened to be all young college grad PhD geologists. And so just to get a conversation started, I turned to Kantowitz and I said, Arthur, what do you think about this foolishness of these speakers talking about fossil fuel? And uh, it was kind of put up. He started laughing. He said, you know, that gets me. He said, he says, I don't, he said, I don't have a geology degree, but he had a thousand other degrees. And he said, I don't understand. He said, you'd think that these heads, these other fellows at the table, we did it on purpose, start <laughs> listening, you know. And he asked, he said, uh, are you gentlemen? He says, you're here at the meeting. Are you gentlemen by any chance geologists? And one fellow, yes, I am. And the other, yeah. he said, well, why don't you tell me? He said, why, why is, why is, oh, you know, he went on like that. We brought the house down because nobody could argue with it. He us. Like, he like Einstein. People aren't going to. And he told him right there, he said, just drop it. But it's, it's in all the books and in all the papers. But it started from that strange meeting in 1892, a scientific convention in G I have a big, thick scientific encyclopedia put out by the Devon Ostrand Company that's about oh, 15 years old now, but it has the whole story of the conference. It doesn't have the Rockefeller part, but it has the whole story of how they straightened out organic chemicals and how it was all figured, and they've got petroleum right in there. Amazing. Amazing. So These aren't accidental things, you see. There's a dollar sign behind almost everything. Yeah.